Olá, você que acompanha a programação da TV Suprem. Está começando agora o 2022, o Brasil que queremos, que é um programa para repensar o país e seus desafios para o futuro. E hoje o programa recebe uma convidada especial. Ela é advogada e foi ex-presidente do Parlamento Grego e a responsável pela auditoria da dívida grega. É sobre esse assunto a entrevista que você vai ver a seguir. E quem conversa com a nossa entrevistada de hoje é a coordenadora da Auditoria Cidadã da Dívida Brasileira, Maria Lúcia Fatorelli. Acompanhe. Olá, eu sou Maria Lúcia Fatorelli, coordenadora da Auditoria Cidadã da Dívida, e hoje vamos realizar um programa com uma convidada muito especial. Está aqui conosco Zoe Constantopoulo, advogada, foi presidente do Parlamento Grego, Atualmente é presidente de um novo partido político é, que se chama Course to Freedom, a caminho da liberdade, e também presidente da Comissão da Verdade, criada por iniciativa dela para realizar a auditoria da dívida grega. Hello Zoe, thank you very much for coming. It's an honor for us to have you here in Brazil. Thank you, Maria Lucia. It's an honor for me too, and a pleasure to be here, to be with you, to be among you, and to talk about issues which are of the essence for both our countries. Thank you so much. Um, well, in this first uh, part of our program, uh, we would like to ask you, you were a former president of the Greek Parliament, and you had this important initiative to create the true Committee on Public Debt. Uh, explain to our people uh, in which context you took this decision and uh, what were the main objectives of this important decision? Maria Lucia, mm -hmm. my people and my country was subjected to an inhumane program back in 2010. The people were told that the economy was sinking like the Titanic. They were told that the country was in debt and that it would go bankrupt. They were told that they had to make huge sacrifices in order to save the country and the economy. Mm -hmm. At the same time, they were told it was their fault. They were told that they overspent, that they lived beyond their means, that they were lazy, corrupt, and uh, uh, basically that they were the reason the country went bankrupt, which was a huge lie. Mm -hmm. Ever since 2010, my country was subjected to a program named the Memorandum. It's a program to supposedly get the country out of the debt. It's a program supposedly to repay Greece's debt. But in reality, it's a program to enslave Greece and Greeks. People have been seeing their revenues go uh, down. They have been seeing the country be sold. And um, a tax tsunami has been imposed upon them. The public property of the country is being privatized. People don't have jobs anymore. 72% of young women are unemployed and 60% of young men are unemployed. And all this is the result of this program in which the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, the European Commission and the European Central Bank, along with uh, a newly created um, um, formation called the EFSF, are becoming Greece's new creditors. Mm -hmm. They're the ones imposing to Greece measures in order to repay the debt. They're the ones asking for democracy to be totally annihilated in order for the debt to be paid. Mm -hmm. All this time, mm -hmm. the debt had never been investigated. All this time, the debt had never been audited. Nobody knew how come such a big debt uh, uh, have been created. The people knew very well that they didn't overspend. They knew very well that they never spent so much money to 
justify this kind of destruction. And it became, ever since 2011, a social demand to investigate the debt, to perform an audit on the debt. And this social demand grew. It grew on the people. It became a social movement. And there were political forces who undertook this social demand and transformed it into a political commitment. Syriza, the party to which I belonged and to which I don't belong anymore, was a main force which guaranteed that it, there was a political commitment to investigate the debt and to refuse to pay a debt which would not be legal. In February 2015, I became president of parliament when Syriza came to power. And on my inaugural speech on the 6th of February, I said there would be um, an investigation on the debt. There would be an audit of the debt exactly and precisely as we had promised. This was the rationale. It was a political commitment. And what is a political commitment becomes an institutional obligation when you're in power. Mm -hmm. I took this decision very, very quickly. The Truth Committee on Public Debt was created very, very quickly. It uh, started operating on the 4th of April, less than two months um, after my election as president. And it performed some extremely important investigations, extremely important works. I take this um, opportunity, Maria Lucia, to thank you for having accepted to be part of this committee. Um, we wouldn't have had our extraordinary results if we didn't have your precious contribution. And I must say that this committee, even though it operated in a very, very short period of time, was capable to produce a preliminary report which was a very, very strong tool for the people, showing that the debt mm -hmm. is illegal, illegitimate, odious, and unsustainable. This means that this is a debt which cannot and should not be paid. Right. Thank you. And, uh, well, I also must thank you. It was a big, great honor for me and for all our citizens that audit in Brazil uh, to be a member of this important initiative, to um, be able to give our work to Greek people and to you as president of the parliament. It was a great honor for us. And I think it would be very important um, to tell us our, a little more about the conclusions, because this committee had uh, such important participation of Greek people also, representatives of so, so civil society in Greece, and also civil society in Europe, and specialists. So it would be important to tell us a little more about the conclusions and how how this was worked by your government then? Well, um, first of all, let me say that what you just uh, pointed out was a strategic and political decision yes. to have a committee which was, would not be just a committee of experts, but it would also be mm -hmm. a committee with the participation of citizens, with the participation of the society. This is why we didn't only invite experts, we didn't only invite academics, but we invited the people mm -hmm. to participate. And indeed, this was, uh, I would say, um, the best combination we could get. It was an open committee working um, publicly. Its works were broadcast through the parliament channel and its uh, reports were also publicized. We had. Uh, press conferences uh, at each stage and we have, we have had um, a policy of transparency. The conclusions of the committee, let me say that what the committee found could have turned history around and can still 
turn history around. Mm -hmm. What the committee found is of such importance and of such strength that it can really demolish what constitutes today's financial and uh, banking system internationally. It can really demolish the regime. The committee found that ever since 2010, it was known to Greece's creditors and to the IMF that Greece could not bear any more loans, that Greece could not bear any more debt, that should they decide to burden the country with more loans and more debt, this would destroy the society and lead to long-term recession and a rupture of the social tissue. It would lead to disaster. And yet, they decided to do it. The committee showed that the creditors knew that what had to be done was a debt striking out, was uh, um, uh, actually to demolish the debt. And they didn't. Why they didn't? They didn't because to do so would provoke big damages to French and German banks because those banks were holding Greek state bonds, and to cut down Greek state bonds would mean big losses for German and French banks. The committee also found what the people knew, that they haven't been overspending, that the, their state had not been overspending for them. It was proven that public expenses at all fields had been below the European average, uh, with one exception, the exception of defense. And it's not a coincidence, because defense is the main sector where we have tens of cases of corruption involving government officials, but also international officials, international government officials, and international firm officials. So what the committee found was that part of the debt was closely linked and intrinsically um, linked to corruption cases. The committee also found that Greece had been burdened with an extreme amount of debt which did not constitute any kind of substantial uh, pecuniary uh, aid to the country. A lot of money had been going to uh, overrated interests and from 2010 to 2015 all the so-called loans given to Greece uh, were actually never passing through Greece's budget. 92% of the loans given to Greece ever since 2010 went back to Greece's creditors. The committee also found that there had been, and there still are, huge, grave violations of international law, including the IMF statute, mm -hmm. constitutional law, and human rights law. Mm -hmm. It found that to um, continue with this path, would mean a total abolition of democratic procedure and fundamental human rights. I would say that the committee provided a very, very precious tool to the government back in June 2015. That was right before the extortion by the creditors. That was right before the referendum. And after June, after July the 5th, after the big no, the big ohi said by Greeks to the extortion, the government had a choice, a clear choice, a choice to serve the democratic and popular mandate, the choice to serve the people, and the choice to use the committee's conclusions, the committee's report. The fact that the government didn't do that only proves that this is a government of traders. And this was the reason why the Greek people have still not profited from the works of the committee. 
Right, it's amazing. And thank you very much. Vocês ouviram as impressionantes é, conclusões dessa comissão. Foi realmente uma lástima que o governo grego não aproveitou todo esse resultado em favor do povo grego. Bom, vamos encerrar esse bloco. Em seguida, vamos continuar conversando com a querida Zoe Constantopoulos sobre os mecanismos que geraram dívida na Grécia, muito parecidos com os que estão em andamento aqui no Brasil. Até já! Retomamos o programa de hoje sobre o sistema da dívida no Brasil e na Grécia com a nossa convidada especial, Zoe Constantopoulos, ex-presidente do Parlamento Grego e presidente da Comissão da Verdade, criada para realizar a Auditoria da Dívida Grega. Uh, querida Zoe, dear Zoe, uh, during our work at the Truth Committee on Public Debt, we found out the main creditor in Greece at the time was EFSF, the European Financial Stability uh, Facility. And we found out it was not a fund, like many people used to believe, but it was a company, a Société Anonyme, uh, organized as a specific purpose company created on the imposition of IMF in 2010. We also found out the partners of this company were 17 European countries. And its main objective was to issue financial instruments. And uh, these financial instruments had the guarantee of the European countries. And this guarantee in 2010 were 440 billion euros. And in 2011, it went up to 700 in 80 billion euros. Well, the result the committee uh, found it was the generation of public debt without any benefit to Greece. Uh, we are talking about this with you because here in Brazil, uh, we have a very similar scheme already going on in many municipalities and regional states. It's illegal. And we have a bill in Congress going on in Senate right now uh, to authorize this kind of business. So we, we wanted to ask you, what could you tell us from Greece's experience about this kind of financial operation? Maria Lucia, let me say, I think think that it's very, very important to share experiences. I'm here uh, in order to give your people a chance to capitalize on the experience, the traumatic experience that my people had. I do believe that if we, the Greeks, had specific knowledge of what had happened here and what had happened all over Latin America, in the 80s, a lot of the damage done to Greece from 2010 to today could have been avoided. And I do believe that now we are in a reverse uh, situation where uh, you should uh, capitalize on our very, very um, bad experience with the IMF and with the European uh, organs. What you described, the system to create companies, the system to do business with public money, with states' money, this system which basically allows private interests to speculate, to gain, and at the same time to contest and refute democracy and the liberties and rights of the people, this system is a universal, I would say, a worldwide promoted trend. What is being crafted is a system in which we wouldn't have states anymore, we wouldn't have countries anymore, we would just have companies. 
if you look at these um, um, at these legal documents, they have nothing to do with policy. They have nothing to do with principles. They have nothing to do with anything that can inspire the people and humanity to move forward. They're just business and they expect us to become uh, basically the guinea pigs in a worldwide uh, experiment. I invite you not to accept to become the guinea pigs in the same way as I am uh, wholeheartedly uh, and with all my strength uh, supporting my people who are refusing to continue being guinea pigs in this experiment. What this system basically entails is a scheme to move private losses to the public. Mm -hmm. It's a scheme to make you pay for their uh, mismanagement. It's a scheme for private interests and banking interests to continue being served without any risk because the risk is taken by the people, by the public. I do believe there are very uh, important similarities between the structure of the European fi uh, uh, Financial Stability Facility, the EFSF, and your uh, bill, which is being discussed in the Senate. This is why I was um, glad to accept the invitation by the Economics Committee of the Senate in order to shed some light to what these um, scenaria and these methods mean. I do hope that light is shed and that the truth is disseminated as soon as possible in order for Brazil not to repeat Greece's experience. Yes, we do too. Your uh, participation in Senate was brilliant. Thank you very much and we really hope the PLS 204 doesn't pass. We really hope. Well, uh, knowing all this damage uh, that that system provoked to Greece and Greek people, um, what can be done after all you've been through? How the civil society, society is organizing in Greece to, to reveal this path and to go on? Well, I have to say I'm very, very glad and very, very proud for uh, a decision we took and uh, which we are uh, moving forward ever since last uh, March. As you know, Maria Lucia, the Truth Committee on Public Debt was very, very um, forcibly chased after the September 2015 elections. The Tsipras government chose to launch a witch hunt against the committee. They, they removed our uh, uh, preliminary reports from the parliament website, then they removed the committee offices, then they unilaterally declared that the committee works are over, even though we very well know that they weren't over, and then they confiscated the archives of the committee and they locked down uh, the offices of the committee, including my own office. Um, I would just say that this only makes us stronger. This gives us the incentive to continue because we know that the truth is a weapon for the people and it's a weapon against the regime. This is why they're fearing us. And we decided to return the committee where it started from as a popular demand, return it to the people. So the committee transformed itself. We said we're not going to obey, we're not going to submit ourselves to those dictates saying that we shouldn't seek the truth about debt, and we said we will operate as an association. So we became an association. You remember that we met mm -hmm. in March um, in Brussels. We took a very historical decision to transform ourselves to a legal entity under Greek law and continue our works. 
being an association means we are even more open to the citizens, even more open to the public. Last uh, um, three weeks ago, on, uh, on November the 5th to the 7th, we performed the first uh, public uh, uh, procedure in Athens of the committee as an association. And on the 4th of April 2017, two years after the committee's creation, we're holding a very, very big meeting in Athens. Continuing in the name of the people, with the participation of the people, but also with the participation of all the initial members of the committee who demonstrated a strength, a perseverance, a decisiveness not to succumb, uh, I would say this is the best way to demonstrate that we're not going to bend, that we're not going to let our future go, that we're not going to make a gift out of our lives to the system, that we're going to fight, we're going to fight for our rights, for the truth and for our dignity. Yes, congratulations. And we are tremendously honored to be part of this experience. And also to tell you and the Greek people, this is what we've been doing here also as citizens that audit all these years. We've been doing this since 2000 here in Brazil. Maria Lucia, I would say that your experience and the experience of other people who participated in the committee was precious. And the fact that you accepted to leave your country and your home for a lot of the weeks and uh, give your energy and your work for my people without receiving any remuneration, without uh, uh, being paid, only to support what was a just goal. I would say this is the best uh, demonstration of solidarity, but also of democratic perseverance. Yes, and then this is the minimum we can do after receiving such an honorable uh, invitation from the Greek parliament and the president. So it's just so important, the, the Greek experience and in your initiative as, as president of, of the, the Greek parliament. We, we must end this uh, precious time with you here. Thank you so much for coming, for your brilliant participation at the Senate and also at the debate in university. You're, you are a, a source of inspiration for us. Thank so you very thank you. much for the honor that you did to me. And let me say I'm at your disposal and at your people's disposal because together we can turn history around. Sure. The truth must come out, right? Right. <risos> ok, thank you so much, Zoe. É, finalizamos este é, importante programa com a nossa querida convidada, Zoe Constantopolo, ex-presidente do Parlamento Grego, que nos deu a honra da sua presença aqui no Brasil, contribuiu nos debates no Senado, na Universidade, na UNB, e também realizamos uma importante reunião na qual traçamos estratégias para continuarmos seguindo com a Auditoria Cidadã aqui no Brasil, na Grécia, em vários outros países onde essa iniciativa também existe, existe dando as nossas mãos para exigir que a verdade sobre esse sistema da dívida, essa utilização da dívida às avessas, venha à tona. Não é possível mais continuar com, esse, com essa geração de dívida pública que serve somente ao setor financeiro e sacrifica os nossos países e, e, e a, a população. Então acompanhe a nossa página www.auditoriacidadã.org.br no Facebook também, Auditoria Cidadã da Dívida. Seguiremos todos juntos. Thank you very much, Zoe. We'll keep on together. Thank you.
Você acabou de assistir a uma edição especial do 2022 O Brasil que Queremos, que foi apresentada pela coordenadora da Auditoria Cidadã da Dívida Brasileira, Maria Lúcia Fatorelli, e teve como convidada especial a ex-presidente do Parlamento Grego. Este programa já está disponível no canal da TV Supra e no YouTube. Eu fico por aqui. Encontro vocês na próxima semana. Até mais!